Hey y'all, welcome back. So uh, today I just want to talk a little bit about Aaron Carter. You know, it was as I was sort of going through articles that were just sort of talking about his life, a lot of them just, uh, you know, troubled singer, dead at 34. And that just made me so sad because I'm like, that's a person. Go on, hop up on your soapbox. Um, I think, you know, it's, uh, it's a really sad story, uh, what we read, or at least what we're finding out, because, um, this just happened recently, I learned about it last night, and, uh, his death, his passing, and, uh, I just thought I'd say a couple things. When I was younger, I listened to the Backstreet Boys, um, because I thought they were great, I just liked their songs, and then, of course, Aaron Carter being the brother of Nick Carter, um, that, you know, he sort of was ushered into stardom uh, kind of along with his brother. I know that they both struggled with their mom as a manager, which can be an issue when you start sort of getting into the nepotism of uh, the industries. I just think that maybe child celebrity is toxic, just in general. Aaron Carter, um, you know, he kind of hit the scene when he was nine years old. He was nine. He was just a child. And um, I think that our, particularly in this country, the United States, um, we just have a situation where we kind of, we all want to be superstars. We all want to be celebrities. We all want a million followers. And is this, is this good for us? You know, we'll, even a mom who's like, my kid could be in a band or could be on stage or could be on tour or could be in a movie. They'll just dump them right into the movie. Maybe not considering what, what sort of life that's going to spell out for that person later on. And if you see a lot of these child stars, I don't want to speak for everybody, but just from what I witness, it seems like a lot of child stars end up with kind of f***ed up adult lives. And that's very sad. Uh, look at Macaulay Culkin. You know, um, you can just see how hitting it big when you're really little, I don't know, then over the decades... You never had a chance to be a kid, or a teenager, or a preteen, or a 20-something. And so, you know, Aaron Carter was only one year younger than I am. I'm 35, he was 34. And of course, it's really sad to just see that the legacy he left was troubled singer. Because we choose to report on him that way. We choose to view him that way. I heard that, um, or I was reading that once he had his son he had actually just sold his house and I think he was trying to kind of get his life in order which can be enormously difficult for a person that's been in kind of the celebrity streak or the limelight or needing to keep up that status for their entire lives what a hassle what a, what a pain what is that living you know I think we all idolize the people who are who are up on stage or who are in the movies or um, have some kind of enormous uh, presence to us but then it's it's so challenging because it's like well keep it up keep it up yeah keep it up keep being a star for the next 30 40 50 years it's probably exhausting ask Beyonce ask anyone who's been a star for a while that it's probably there are probably days you just want to be a normal person and likely there are days that you don't there are probably days that you want to be a star but I think we kind of do this thing in this country where we one thing we love is putting somebody up on a pedestal and idolizing them. And then, what we love almost just as much as that is cutting them and watching them bleed out in front of us. I mean, Britney Spears' story is, is incredible and sad, and she was just a teenager too when this happened, as people are all sitting around just kind of pervertedly ogling over her body and her dancing, and, and that younger and younger and younger become the stars 
and younger and younger and younger do they meet their deaths. So, is this good for us? Is this healthy? Consider this. You know, the music industry can be really savage and brutal. And um, that's why I think a lot of people, I mean, I include myself in this. I'm a songwriter, and I love making music, and I love making these videos about music. But I almost don't want a single damn thing to do with the music industry. Because it seems just toxic at every single turn. Somebody's trying to exploit you. Somebody's trying to turn your personality into a brand. You got a hit album? Great. Now make another one. Now make two a year for the next ten years. Jesus. Uh, it's, it's hard to describe. It's just a sadness. And... I think we should use instances like this to maybe reflect a little on what it is we're doing to people, what it is we're doing to each other, why it is that we we gun so hard for celebrity. So in 2011, uh, Aaron uh, stepped into The Fantastics. It was the longest running show in um, Broadway's history. It wasn't a Broadway show, it was an off-Broadway show, but it was right there in the heart of Times Square. It was playing at the what's called the Snapple Theater. And I remember this because every day I would walk through Times Square on my way to work. I think at the time I was doing Memphis or stepping in and out of Memphis. Um, so I was doing Broadway shows. And I kind of thought, oh, look, you know, another show that's plugging in a celebrity so they can sell tickets. And they did. And he was sort of in and out, but I think he enjoyed the work. And he was young at the time. We, we all were. But it's, uh, it's just sad for me to see that somebody lived a whole life. And he had his ups and downs and his ins and outs. And I know that he, um, he struggled. But did we try and help him? I mean, there's rehab, but did he feel a sense of community? Did he feel a sense of belonging? God, it just seems so tired. And that we would yank a kid at seven or nine and throw them up on stage and make them the front of the band so that everyone can go, look how good he is, and he's so young. And when he stops being young, we're gonna stop loving him. So are you, sub are you obsessed with celebrities? Think about it. You need to spend a little time looking in the mirror. I think we all are to a degree. And with social media, we are screwing up our kids. And then when they become angry, irritable, messed up adults, we want to blame gener whole generations. What's wrong with you? You don't want to work hard. You want everything handed to you. All this stuff. And yet, I mean, it's what a weird sort of pretzel that we've gotten ourselves into where we all want to be stars. We all want to be super celebrity, rock star, rock gods and icons, and we're not going to be. And actually, if you became that, it might be nice for a year, two years, five years. Keep it up for 10 years. Keep it up for 15 years. Keep it up for 18, 20, 28, 32, 36 years. You either be bored or you blow out, or you OD. I applaud the people that I used to watch in the movies or people who were in bands who maybe hit it big for a little while and then disappeared and did something different, changed their career, changed their lives, changed where they live. To me, that is healthy. Let's say everyone has a right to be a celebrity or be a star for a little bit of time. And you can kind of soak up that limelight for a little bit, but then you got to move on. And I see these people all around, music industry, actors, directors, Hollywood, that they get to a certain level of stardom and then their whole life is just keep the brand alive. Do whatever you can to keep from changing. Do whatever you can to keep from riding the ebbs and flows of being a person alive. And when you die, we'll remember you as Troubled Singer. That's so I had a meeting with Aaron Carter about a month ago. Oh, my God. Um, and Aaron and I sat down at a restaurant called La Petite in, in uh, off Sunset Boulevard. And he said, hey, Tony, I, I really like Kylie Marshall, man. I want to I wanna do something with you guys. I want to help her. He said... I, I would be honored if she would redo my song, I Want Candy. He said, but the only thing is, I want to be on the record with her. And I said, Aaron, listen, I don't think it's a good idea for you to be on the record with her, number one, because you're, you're an older man, she's a young girl. Yep. And, I, and I don't want them to misinterpret what candy means. Right. I said, so let me ask you, I said, when you did that, what did, that, what did candy represent? He said, well, he said, when I did it, it represented cocaine. And I'm thinking in the back of my mind is, you were like, who was who was supervising this kid at 15 years old that uh, allowed him to do mean? cocaine, or 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 didn't recognize that your 15, the 15 year old is doing cocaine? So we never did get the record, but he did send Kylie a message and he, he, he talked about how proud of the, how proud of her he was. 
and um, and and we, we we would go on to have a conversation, and he would order another Shirley Temple, because I don't care what people say, that boy was really trying to <clears throat> to get it right. He was fighting and he was fight, fighting a, a, an enemy that doesn't play fair, you know. Um, but for him to sit there and order a Shirley Temple, I knew he was trying, you know. He lost the battle, but I'm not gonna let the world say that he was this bad kid. We all make mistakes, but let's point the finger sometimes where the finger needs to be pointed at. Let's point the finger at the people that were supposed to be watching him, supposed to be making sure that he went right as opposed to going left. You know, where's the responsibility for them? So, so we, um, when I, when I sat down with Aaron, I saw I saw a kid who was 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 drowning with nobody to throw a raft. 